connections, directions, reception, reflection. It's um, 2, 11 a.m. on, well, I guess now Tuesday. Monday has become Tuesday, uh, March 30th, 2021. I was sleeping for a few hours and just woke in the middle of the night and it's one of these, I'm not gonna go back to sleep unless I get out and receive whatever it is that the sky has for me. And by the way, that's behind me right now. Let me show you a little something on the ground. What does that mean? when we can see that much of our shadow in the middle of the night as the moon is high and bright. We're gonna start here. And so if you've been watching these videos, you know I'm out. If it's the same time of year, and it is, that I'm out at a very different time of night because notice that the orientation of the dipper is much different. And last night we talked about a few ways to work with the dipper. One of them is to um, work with the cup stars, the pointer stars, some say, to get to Polaris. And is Polaris not, Polaris is not in your frame. I'll have to kind of turn the camera here. There we go. And you can see the angle of the roof now and get an idea for how we've turned our head, right? But here's the Big Dipper and the pointer stars, the last two stars, the cup pointing to Polaris, okay? So I'm getting my directions, I'm tuning in to north. <clears throat> so before I started the camera, uh, I was really connecting into what brought me out here into the sky, what woke me up, and then getting directions. So here I am at the north. And the energy of the north, <laughs> it's a good time to know it, for the northern hemisphere is the roots, so we're looking up here, but the sun visits the north in this hemisphere skies in the middle of the night, well below the ground. So the North Star helps me find the directions, but as the camera's pointing up, you can't see me behind it. I'm down, I'm digging into the ground. And that's also something I've done before I hit record, so I'm just going to take you on the quick tour and go back to sleep. Okay, I did talk yesterday about a few fun things with the tipper. Um, I also mentioned that between the bears, okay, because Big Dipper is Big Bear, Little Dipper is the, um, or Polaris that it points to is the tail of the little bear, the little dipper, which is like this. I think you can probably only see the two ends of the cup, which for the little dipper are equivalent to these pointer stars of the big dipper. But there's also a star here and a star here and a star here. So it draws another little dipper, a little bear. Between the bears runs this dragon like this, comes all the way down and then back up kind of sweeping actually below the house, and then that's the head of the dragon here on the right. So let's go look over there. And the dragon's head is kind of getting after Mercury's lyre, and the harp in the sky, which is now Apollo's. So Lyra, let me tune into what you're looking at through the camera. Yeah, this is the dragon's face. See these four? This is it's very important, this dragon, for like long term, and we're gonna talk more about that later in the course. 
and a lot of that's kind of like level two sky story stuff but anyway the dragon's head will bring you to vega super bright super blue power star and we'll be looking more at vega and an asterism that vega belongs to um, called the summer triangle or the navigator's triangle another time right now you can't even see the constellation of Lyra because most of it's behind the roof from this point of view uh, the dragons maybe after the Lyra but really after Hercules who is up here let's see if I can point out Hercules to you okay so And the, cam the camera's seeing more stars than I can with my naked eye right now. So, it can be hard to equate the two. Huh, it's interesting, like I can really clearly see Hercules with my naked eye. And then when I look through the camera eye, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tone this down a little. Oh no, there he is, okay. So see this, Parallelogram, well, it's not a parallelogram, this trapezoid. That's the body of Hercules. His arms are like this, kind of spread out, and legs go this way. So, <clears throat> the thing, I, only thing I really want to tell you about all that right now is that learning the way that constellations connect, learning these stories, oh, the dragon's after. Hercules, the dragons after the harp, you know, you can create a story about that or find an old story about that. I don't know of any of, Her of Hercules and the harp. I certainly know, you know, Hercules and the dragon, that's a kind of clear theme, right? Okay, anyway, so, so last night we were talking about working with Big Dipper to get to North Star. We're also seeing how we could arc to Arcturus, and I'll do that in a second, but there's Big Dipper pointing to Polaris. Remember how I said yesterday, let's go this way, and I'll pause, that if you um, kind of drill a hole in the bottom of the Dipper's cup, it will pour water onto the lion. Okay, so lions and bears, y'all, lions and bears. Big Dipper, part of Ursa Major. And this trapezoid you see on the left of the frame, this is the Sphinx, this is the lion now facing down. Head is like this. Okay, this is Regulus, heart of the lion, royal star. See that Dipper leaking onto the lion? Denebola, tail of the lion. Sospa and Cherton. Right, so we just have this whole lion trapezoid here. Okay, so now we're in the ecliptic realm. Um, show one more thing with the dipper. I'm gonna scoop back. So this is gonna get streaky. Which is, if you'll remember, we said, follow the arc. Okay, I gotta like get down on a knee here so high. Follow the arc to Arcturus. Okay, let's try to get them both in frame. Hold on a sec. Yeah, it's as high as I can go. Okay. Follow the arc of the Dipper to Arcturus and then spike to Spica, which is right above the tree. Um, okay. Sorry about the shaky camera work. And now we can see how far the moon's moved since last night. Before we go there, I want to connect you into the zodiac hole constellations we can see and to the ecliptic. Okay, so I'm going to move from the south here towards the west and 
Here's our lion friend again. Feet on the ground view. And let's go over here to the western sky. I wonder who those twin stars are. Oh yeah, right, the twins. Okay, so let me be here. The first of these backyard astronomy videos I recorded a few nights ago, I think it was on the 27th. Uh, we were looking at Orion and uh, the twins above and how high they are. And at the time Leo, the lion, was rising. And I really should say the lion, not Leo, because as you've learned in these sacred astronomy classes, if you've watched chapter one, the circle of spirit, what in the heavens is a zodiac, you know well that um, constellations and signs are very different things. So I try to stay true to this nomenclature of calling signs things like Gemini, Cancer, Leo, and constellations things like twins and lion. Okay, let me see Oops. if I can get more lion on the screen. Uh, okay, that's what we're gonna do. I wanna leave a little bit of tree so you get some earth. Okay. So, now the crab in between the two, super dim. And I live, you know, in the Bay Area. It's really bad light pollution. I'm a little ways out, but not really. So, we're gonna have to get out of town to see the crab. You know, I'm seeing a uh, star here, but the crab's really kind of down here. The lion is very well north of the ecliptic. Regulus is right on the ecliptic. The ecliptic is running from Regulus. Now, let me come down now. Just know that this is Regulus. Let me show more of the lion. Okay. See the lion now? Here's the sphinx, right? And the tail, Denebola, tail of the lion, and this crook of the head. See that? Okay, so that's the line in the sky, a very discernible, a very large constellation. So Regulus right on the ecliptic. I'm gonna bring Regulus into like top of the frame here so I can show more of the twin. So Regulus is on our upper left here, right? The heads of the twins, Castor and Pollux. How do I know who's who? Well, if you know the story, who dies first? The, the mortal twin, Castor, right? Well, who's gonna die first? The one that is towards the west, right? Castor's gonna set first. Now, I'm looking with my naked eye for any of the stars of the twins below, their bright heads. Oh, nope. <laughs> but maybe through the camera. Let's see, I'm gonna open this up even more. No, that's all we've got, folks. Anyway, there is a um, where were we? I guess I can just stay there. We'll go bright as we can. There's a star here called um, Mebs Watsat and Mebsuta. They're like that, and the ecliptic runs through there and runs up to Regulus. Okay, I'm gonna come down here again because things get super extra streaky. That. Um, and if you watched chapter one, I don't know, maybe it was lesson five, talked about using a hula hoop to run between ecliptic stars, because then you can connect into where the ecliptic plane is, since the ecliptic's not a line but a curve. Maybe bring this closer, it gets a little curvier. I'll do it this way. Yeah, something like that, okay. Maybe like this. <clears throat> anyway, so if I can know where Mebsuta is, that last hoop version was just way too curvy, <laughs> by the way. So I'm going to draw this line. <clears throat> I know that the crab, somewhere in this zone, there's a star called Asilis Australis. Now, why is it uh, even worse stargazing conditions tonight, even though there's not a cloud in the sky? Um, because there's a gigantic moon. The moon is still nearly full. It's definitely in the waning phase now. So 
So that's what brought me outside, by the way. Let's go have a look. So twins, the hidden crab somewhere there, right? It's an interesting uh, contemplation of why would the crab be hidden. All right, lion. And then after the lion, we're going to go to the priestess, right? So let's stop here. I'm going to keep some lion stars in the frame. Let's keep all the lion in. So now on the right, yeah. So Regulus is here now, right? And the next very bright star of the ecliptic after Regulus is Spica, Chitra, Chitra, Spica here. Okay, so remember before we followed the arc, we come back up to the dipper who leaks water onto the lion. Okay, but we also from the dipper follow the arc to Arcturus. Spike to Spica. Okay. Let me get some lion in the frame again. So now on the upper right, lots of lion. Yeah. And then a lot of space between the lion and the first kind of visible stars and a bright moon like night like this of the priestess, which is here, Porama. In our day and age, Regulus one degrees tropical Virgo. Okay, Denebola is kind of in the, the 20 Virgo zone. This is like 15 Virgo-ish here. Okay, 10 Libra, Porama, shoulder of the priestess, prophecy star. I feel a lot of Cassandra in that star. And maybe we'll be in storyteller mode another night. Okay, Porama, 10 Libra. Speak a 24 Libra. By the way, we can really see how high the moon is because Speak is just a bit south of the ecliptic plane, which runs through Regulus. It's like this. Okay, so this is where we really want to use the hula hoop. There's something curvy. I'm going to go through Regulus and through Speak. Okay. So you can see how high most of the line is above the plane. In northern hemisphere, so that's like north of the ecliptic for every hemisphere, and that translates to high in the sky for the northern hemisphere, okay? So you see what I'm doing with the hoop? I'm bringing it through Regulus and through Spica. Regulus right on the ecliptic, Spica just a tiny bit below, okay? So give you an idea of what the ecliptic's doing right now, how north of the ecliptic plane the lion is, and how north of the ecliptic plane the moon is right now, and that is because she is... Oh, ahead of her. Well, is ahead the right word? <laughs> she's, let's say it this way, she's zodiacally past her north node, finding her way to the south node. And this is what brought me out, I'm sure. The moon has moved into the sign of Scorpio. And uh, my sun, the sun sign for me, is the first degree of Scorpio. And so moon crossed my sun tonight, and I woke up inspired also concerned for the cat <laughs> um, while we're here why not just zoom down a little bit and I'll show you the crow Corvus next to the tree one two three four it's the crow this is one of Hermes Mercury stars more about that another time Hermes Mercury stars, <laughs> Hermes magical stars, or the Bohemian stars. Okay, um, a little bit more of the priestess. Let me open up the camera more here. Yeah. So, Spica, Porama. And see, this is the parallelogram of the priestess's body, who's kind of laying on her side here. This star is Vindia Matrix, it's reaching up towards the heavens. And then Spica is the other, this kind of arms come down here, shaft of wheat that she holds. The other arms reaching up this way. So there's a head star. Let me get oriented. This is Denebola. So yeah, head of the priestess. That's Porima. I don't know, they're pretty dim. So I want to be careful 
in this kind of light, but Zavi Java is a kind of head star of the priestess that marks the gateway between tropical Virgo and uh, tropical Libra. But these stars that are very visible, Purima, 10 Libra, Spica, 24 Libra. So I can see the moon is beyond, you know, 10 Libra, 24 Libra. Where? And the moon's now in Scorpio. So I came out here, I didn't know that. Sometimes I'm really casting charts every day, writing about transits or whatever. Right now I'm teaching an astronomy course and how to see the chart in the sky, right? So this is my chart. I came outside and I was like, ah, oh, I'm not asleep. Something out there is calling me and should let the cat in and um, probably should grab the camera because I've shown folks like, oh, night and early morning. I haven't shown the middle of the night. <laughs> so it's kind of complete the, complete the thing. And the moon's going to have moved. So again, every night if we just go out, we're going to see the moon's phase changing. I'm not going to see that in this camera. I'm just going to see the moon bl blow out, look full, like all the time. Um, but we can certainly see the moon moving quickly, right? So last night, not yet to Spica, between Porima and Spica, and now east of Spica, because the secondary motion, the orbital motion for planets, when direct, as moon and sun always are, is from the west to the east. Primary motion rising in the east, setting in the west. As the earth spins, the sky spins from the east to the west. But the secondary motion, like from, you know, let's just look at the constellations, the lion, to the priestess, to the scales, which are here on the left of the screen, right? That's west to east. I'm looking south right now, west. The descendant is on my right, and east and the ascendant is on my left. Okay, so speak of moon has just moved into Gemini. I think the moon, oh, I haven't checked a chart, but it looks like maybe two, two Scorpio. I said the moon just moved into Gemini. Sorry, the moon is probably two, two and a half degrees Scorpio there. Let's see, it's now 2.35 a.m. on March 30th, Tuesday, I'm in El Sobrante. Yeah, moon 2 degrees, 31 minutes, Scorpio, and right at the midheaven, by the way. We'll work with the midheaven later. Okay, and so, Zubinel Janubi, here, another ecliptic star. Okay, so let me go hoop again. And I'm going to go here above Spica, and then right through Zubinel Janubi. And you can see that the moon is super north right now. Okay, when the moon's on the hoop, the moon's at her node. Because the nodes are where the moon's path crosses the sun's path. Okay. And as we're doing this, we get to see where the next ecliptic stars are. Zubin al Janubi's right on it. So you see a star that's down to the left of the screen, super bright. And below the hoop, what star is that? And... The answer is um, either Deshuba or Fong. I can't remember, but it's one of the kind of front stars of the scorpion. So we'll go there in the end. Um, I've got to bring my camera down a little bit. Okay, cool. Let me get the hoop back out one more time. Okay, we're going to go through Spica. Here. Zubin al Janubi. And this is um, <clears throat> a crab. A graphius. It's like the front of the three stars of the scorpion. One's behind the tree. In the heart of the Scorpion and Taurus will be kind of right in here. I might be able to move and have Antares show up. So something like 
this because the ecliptic runs just north of a crab as well, right through Zubin al Janubi, 15 degrees tropical Scorpio. Okay, so something like that is our ecliptic right now. Cool. Alright, so let's finish up by trying to get a view of another royal star who is Antares. I don't know. I, can, I think I'm just going to have to pick the camera up. <laughs> I can't see if Antares is shown on the screen. Let me go a little higher. Hold on a second. This is extreme astrophotography going on here. And maybe up there, you can see high enough above the trees to see the heart of the scorpion. Antares, I'm not sure. I am sure that. Bye. <laughs>